Now, as is commonplace, uh, it's about providing resources to the listeners. And a little while ago, I introduced you guys to a brother that I'm truly impressed with. His name is Isilfi Taylor. And this dude is about managing money, you know. And I think in our community, we have a problem with money. We're always in pursuit of it. We don't know how to save it. We don't know how to make the money work for us. You know, <laughs> we're always chasing it. It's never chasing us. So I decided to bring in a selfie to give some basic information on how to turn your finances around. And with that said, I want to introduce you guys to a selfie Taylor again. Welcome, man. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me. Always, brother. Listen, really quickly. A lot of people have a problem with debt. So... I need you to really clear some of that stuff up. You gave me some questions uh, like this one. Should I work on eliminating debt first or saving money for the future? A lot of times people are torn between the right. two, rock and a hard place. Right. So what should they do? Uh, there's two mindsets out there, right? There's a debt elimination mindset and there's an asset accumulation mindset. I tend to have more of an asset accumulation mindset, but uh, in general we sit down with our clients and we analyze the debt. For example, take uh, what I would uh, call good debt, like a mortgage debt. Mm -hmm. Right now, money's relatively cheap, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get borrowing rates three, four percent, depending on the terms of your loan. So if I can borrow at four percent, and all of the interest associated with that loan is deductible, right? I don't know that I really want to pay that off because if I can earn more than four percent on my money, then I want to invest. So if I'm earning eight percent of my money and borrowing at four then I'm up actually 4% hmm. versus bad debt, like credit card debt, hmm. right? So if I have credit card debt of 18, 19, 20%, even if I could earn seven, 8% of my money, then I would try to eliminate the credit card debt first, hmm. right? Because if, I, if I'm borrowing at 18% and making eight, I'm actually still in the hole 10%, mm -hmm. right? So it's not so much that I tell people, oh, you should always eliminate debt or no, always invest. We have to weigh out what type of debt is it? Hmm. Is the interest rate low? Is the interest deductible? If so, I might say you might want to carry that debt and invest your money, mm. right? Um, investing money is, is, is there's, a, there's the, 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 uh, the power of compounding interest, mm. okay? Power of compounding interest as such, you know, I'll give you an illustration. Take, take, a, take, take a job interview, you had a job interview and, and the interviewer says, look, I'm gonna pay you one or two ways and I'm gonna let you choose the way that you get paid. Mm. Either I'm going to pay you $1,000 a day for 30 days or I'll pay you one single penny the first day and I will double, I will compound that penny each subsequent day. Which payment option do you think you would choose? I think the first one. Okay, sounds good, right? Yeah. $1,000 a day, 30 days, $30,000 for the month. Right. Seems like a good month's work, right? Sounds like it, right. But taking that penny the first day and doubling it each subsequent day for that same 30 day period of time adds up to over $10 million. Wow. Right? Now we sit, <laughs> we sit and we say, how, wait a minute, how could that be, right? Mm -hmm. One penny becomes two pennies, becomes four, becomes eight, and then you just say, I forget it, right? But compounding interest is powerful, mm -hmm. right? Because a dollar becomes two dollars, four dollars, eight, 16, 32, 64, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. get up to 125 bucks, 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000, mm -hmm. right? 4,000, 8,000, 16,000, and so forth. Perfect. Now where's, where's the, the power in that illustration? Not in a penny. Pays not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's all wrapped up in the time. Mm. See, if I cut that growth time from 30 days to 20 days, or 20 days to 15 days, that penny's not nearly as attractive. Right. And it's the same thing in our own lives, mm. right? The longer we wait, we're only hurting ourselves, right? So if I can put money away over long periods of time, even if I can't save a lot, you know, it can actually still amount to, to quite a bit at the end of the day. At the end of the day, how can I establish and build credit? Um, it, it, it's, it's interesting, right, because credit means so much, right, that the world really runs on credit, especially here in the United States, um, but yet we're not, we're not taught these things. No one teaches. It's like, it's like saying, hey, um, go, go play a game. Go play rugby. You know the rules of rugby? Well, well, no. How could I ever be effective in a game if I don't know the rules? Right. right? So how can we be effective in the game of life and accumulating wealth, wealth if we don't know the rules? Right. So building your credit. Typically, I find people have one or two um, ideals as it relates to, to credit. Mm -hmm. They either think, oh, I got a credit card, free money, right? I can go buy whatever I want, <laughs> right? right. <And> it's just, <laughs> it's not real, it. right? right? Or they're so afraid, oh, no, no, no debt. I, I'll, I'll just pay cash, I don't want. And, and actually, neither one of those mindsets is actually good mm. in that 
yeah, you can swipe away, but one day <laughs> that bill's gonna come, right? And like we talked about earlier, typically at a very high interest rate, right? Mm -hmm. On the flip side, if if I only use cash and I don't establish credit, when it comes time to do things like buy a car or, or the American dream, right, buy a home, I haven't proven that I'm credit worthy. I haven't mm -hmm. proven that I can actually pay a bill on time. Mm -hmm. So if you get, you know, from time to time, banks will send you uh, um, credit card offers. You might get them in the mail. Uh, um, if you're, if you're, uh, um, uh, if you're trying to apply for a car loan, these are all actually good things to have, right? Mm -hmm. You want to establish your credit. You generally want to have at least three to four lines of credit, mm -hmm. right? And most importantly, you want to pay them timely. Right, you do not want to be late, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're 30 days, 60 days, 90 days late, that's gonna ding your credit. Mm -hmm. Which of these two scenarios do you think is worse? Do you think it's worse to owe $400 on a card with a $500 limit, or owe $5,000 on a card with a $20,000 limit? I'll take the latter, okay? Wrong. Right? Of course. <laughs> of course. It's actually it's, so it's, it's it's actually worse mm -hmm. to owe four hundred dollars on a card with a five hundred dollar limit mm. than it is to owe what I say five thousand dollars on a card with a twenty thousand dollar limit. You say, well, how could that be? How's it worse to owe four hundred bucks than five thousand mm -hmm. dollars? Because the lender, the credit bureaus are going to look at what's available to you and what have you mm -hmm. utilized. Mm -hmm. So if I have a five hundred dollar credit limit. And I've spent 400. I've used 80% of what's available on that card. Wow! So I say, Jesus, we extend credit to this person. They're gonna they're gonna take it up to the max. To the max. Right. Right. Versus if I have a twenty thousand dollar limit mm -hmm. and I've only spent five, I'm at twenty percent utilization. Hmm. So in general, we want to keep our utilization of our credit cards down below twenty to thirty percent if we can, mm -hmm. and certainly pay them off. Mm -hmm. Now you might say, well, heck, if I have a five hundred dollar card. It's pretty tough to keep that one purchase. I buy a TV or a washing machine or one you know major purchase, and I'm I'm going to be maxed out. Right. So the thing that's interesting is if you're paying your bills timely, depending on the credit card company, you can call them every three to six months and ask them for a credit increase. Mm. And they most certainly will do so if you're showing that you can pay your bills on time because they want you to spend more. They want you to finance more. Mm -hmm. So if I can take that starter card and get from 500. To a thousand, to five thousand, to ten thousand. The next time I need to buy plane tickets to go visit family, right. or or an emergency or opportunity comes up and I need to put it on my card, that one purchase isn't going to take me to the max. Right. All right, e, e Silphy, you're killing me right now. You've already proven that I don't know how to save money. I don't know how to build credit. But what I need to know is how are my credit score and my credit worthiness. Calculate. I want to get at least three, four lines of credit, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I, I, especially if something goes wrong, if I have one card, I don't want to max out that one card and and, and, and be up the creek, so to speak. Um, so I want at least you know three, four lines of credit. Um, so the credit bureaus are looking at a few things. They're looking at how many lines do you have. They're looking at what is the utilization, right? Are you staying below this 20, 30% threshold that we discussed? Mm -hmm. um, they also wanna know how long have these cards been established, mm -hmm. right? Is it, is it six months old, a year old, five years old, 10 years old? Mm -hmm. Because the longer the card has been established, again, they have a better gauge on how you will you know, how you uh, will pay your bills. Mm -hmm. For example, I've met people that go, oh, I've had a credit card for years and, and, and I cut it up, I canceled that card. You actually don't wanna cancel credit cards. Really? And here's why. Let's say that I have uh, four cards, so mm -hmm. I have four cards, and what the credit bureaus are going to look at is what's the total length of history. So for example, if I've had one card for 10 years and I had uh, two cards for two years, mm -hmm. or three cards for two years, let's say, so that's uh, three cards for two years, so that's six, and I had one for 10, that's 16, mm -hmm. okay? So that's 16 years of total credit divided by the four cards I have that gives mm -hmm. me an average credit history of four years. <laughs> if I cancel the card that's 10 years old and leave the three that are remaining, now my credit history goes from an average of four years to two. It's wow. going to hurt me. Wow. Right? So if people say, well, I don't really use this card, look, put gas in your car, pay it off. Okay, it's Sylphie, you've, you've blown me away in a matter of four or five minutes, <laughs> you know, with all of that information. For somebody that's out there trying to connect with you and, and really take their financial acumen to the next level, how do they reach you? How do they connect with you? Where do they find you? Taylor, I-N-S-F-I-N.com.
we're there. Um, our phone number here is area code 626-356-7637. Um, yeah, so we're, we're, we're here, we're here. So I work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. And, and again, this is just episode one of our financial empowerment segment. Of course, I'm gonna have you Sylphie Taylor back and we're gonna be covering different financial subjects and topics just for your, for your benefit.